Hi, I'm Grace Adetapi. I'm Keanu Levine. And I'm Sarah Poston. And this is our radiation therapy research proposal. Although there are many forms of, of cancer, breast cancer seems to be the most common. Even though it is more common among, among women than men, with 1 in 10 women being diagnosed and 1 in 1,000 men being diagnosed, both must undergo the same series of treatments. The problem we encounter with these treatments, such as radiation therapy, is that it may cause a cognitive decline in the patient's brain. Although radiation therapy may have a positive immediate effect, there is a possibility it may cause a long-term negative effect. Some of the articles we use, such as Journal of Cancer Research and Clinical Oncology, reported that 155 out of the 264 patients showed brain metastasis after cancer therapy. Another article, Unlocking, Unlocking Electronic Medical Data to Identify Possible Connections Between Cancer and Cognitive Decline, discusses that there may not even be any ties between cancer therapy, such as chemotherapy and cognitive decline. The way breast cancer and radiation therapy correlate to cognitive decline in the brain is through the lymphatic system. When the patient is undergoing radiation therapy, it affects the lymph nodes near the breast, killing and mutating important cells, making it easy for these corrupted cells to spread to the brain. The purpose of our study is to investigate if radiation therapy is the best option for cancer patients considering long-term results. Our research question was how does radiation therapy on stage two breast cancer patients affect cognitive decline over the course of 10 years? Our hypothesis was if a stage two breast cancer patient begins the process of radiation therapy, then after about four years of completed treatment, cognitive decline will begin to occur because radiation therapy can cause normal cell depletion as well as abscopal effects which negatively affect the body and the brain. The methodology we will be using to test our hypothesis is we'll be taking, an MRI will be taken um, before the treatment and every two years after the treatment has been completed. We'll be looking at the parietal lobe, frontal lobe, Broca's region, temporal lobe, and hippocampus, as these are the key regions for cognitive decline. We will also be looking at verbal comprehension. A verbal reasoning test will be taken. It tests word fluency, the ability to evaluate, reason, and conceptualize with words and sentences. The verbal reasoning test was created by a plethora of professionals, including Stephen Blyer, who was the founder and managing director. He is a business psychologist. The developer for this assessment was an IT whiz named Emma Gardner. She programs test simulation software and scoring algorithms. This test is also used to test verbal comprehension and cognitive decline worldwide when athletes get concussions. We will also be using a manual speed and accuracy test. The test subjects will be required to type out a designated paragraph and their speed and accuracy will be measured by a specific equation. The roles and responsibilities we will include are when working with people 50 years or older, they will need to have a proxy or person to help them make the decisions to be present. Each person shall be treated fairly despite their sexual orientation, gender, education, and economical stance, thoroughly informing everyone, patients, proxies, and family members of what our research will include before they sign the consent forms, while giving them enough time to consider the proposition. Informing the family members and cancer patients will not be, we will not be experimenting on them through the, the use of drugs or radiation. The test subjects have complete control of whether or not to proceed the radiation therapy after their initial diagnosis of stage 2 breast cancer. If cognitive decline is noticed in any patient and they become non-autonomous, they are not required to continue the research. But if they do decide to, they are allowed, they're required a proxy, being made sure to register in a publicly accessible database before recruitment of the first subject is also important. Patients cannot return if their cancer becomes an issue again or the data will be insignificant to our research. We use the Belmont Report with beneficiaries making sure that the patient will not be harmed in any way during the study, respect for persons, treating the subjects with respect and understanding their decisions if they decide, even if they decide to pull out of the study, and justice, making sure that the subjects and their families are being taken care of financially and keeping them up to date with the results of the study. These code of ethics are used in related professional organizations to help our research team devise the rules and regulations for this research proposal. These included the Code of Ethics, American Society for Clinical Laboratory Science, 
Science, the American Psychology Association, the Ethical Principles of Psychology, and the Code of Conduct. Each cancer patients around the world will know the true effects of radiation therapy in the long term and will be able to decide if it's truly worth it to go through the process. An implication might be that if this hypothesis does end up being true, then cancer patients around the world will lose some credibility when it comes to radiation therapy and its effects. Positive and negative. Cancer research teams will now have to try to find a new method that is more positive than negative in the long run. If this situation were to occur, cancer communities would get a better opinion to option to end cancer. Knowing this research best affects the surrounding people helps the research team better know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it and what they plan to accomplish from it. Thank you for listening to our research proposal. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact us and let us know.